Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I usually talk about the wonders of automation in the building construction industry, both in the software and the hardware fields, but I've largely ignored the ethics of automation. I decided to make a video on this topic because of a recent interview between Ivanka Trump and Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple. They urged workers who are unhappy with their jobs or unemployed due to the current state of affairs to find something new. They have a website called findsomethingnew.org which links to IT training services, apprenticeships, vocational training and online courses. There was plenty of backlash after this announcement with some calling it tone deaf and comparing it to the phrase let them eat cake or even better let them eat code. I think the backlash stems from both the message and the person conveying the message but we should question whether it's really meant to be hurtful or if it's just trying to encourage people to adapt to survive this struggle is nothing new humans have historically moved in search of jobs and opportunities whether it was migration to new lands learning to plant new crops moving out of the agriculture industry during the industrial age etc if things weren't going their way they had to pivot We'll tackle the ethics of automation from five angles. The first is the ethics of unemployment. Tedious repetitive manual labor is being taken over by machines who are more precise, can work 24 hours a day and don't demand higher wages or benefits. I made a video on the mechanization of the agriculture industry and how it improved productivity. The displaced farmers moved to cities and got jobs in factories where they earned higher wages. When factory work was automated, people then moved to the tech sector and other specialized fields. What's going to happen when every sector of the economy is taken over by robots and automation? There's an incredible book called Rise of the Robots: Technology and the Threat of a Jobless Future by Martin Ford. The author believes that complete automation is inevitable and it will be beneficial for society and the economy to let machines do the work. and give humans a universal income the book starts off with a story about workers using shovels on a government project instead of bulldozers and tractors because it was a jobs program milton friedman an economist who was observing this pointless manual labor replied why not give the workers spoons instead of shovels ah uh. are we going to create unnecessary jobs just to keep humans busy or are we going to view machines as the inevitable future and proactively prepare for it the second is the ethics of ai leadership the human brain is made up of complex organic neural networks we haven't been able to fully replicate it with artificial neural networks yet this would be a hypothetical strong ai like ultron or the terminator these movies sensationalize strong ai and prey on our fear of letting machines completely take over which isn't unfounded elon musk thinks that strong ai is a fundamental existential risk for human civilization the late stephen hawking viewed the emergence of ai as possibly the worst event in the history of our civilization bill gates also believes that in a few decades ai will be strong enough to be a concern Complete control by AI may not prove to be too bad but we're running towards automation at such speed and incorporating it into every industry including sensitive ones like banking trading security and healthcare we aren't slowing down to check the repercussions of our current actions the third is the ethics of suppressed competition unions have a pretty strong influence in the construction industry They are supposed to protect workers' rights, provide them with job security and benefits. But many general contractors seem to despise them because the lack of competition results in lower productivity. I have heard of companies that hire the minimum required number of union workers, pay them to do nothing and then contract out all their work to private companies. Is it ethical to let the construction industry suffer because of this decreased competition? What happens when an outsider with plenty of capital disrupts the building construction industry and ignores all the entrenched rules think of the impact that tesla and amazon have had in the automobile and retail industries after getting my masters of architecture degree from the university of cincinnati in ohio i moved to san francisco for a while now the architecture industry is notorious for paying their employees 
particularly new graduates, pitiful wages and encouraging outrageous working hours. Every young architect that I knew in San Francisco heard stories about the six-figure wages and perks available in the tech field, and they were obviously envious. So they pivoted. They turned to UX design or user experience design because that was the gateway into the tech field. Curbing the progress of the architecture industry will lead to a mass exodus of talent. The fourth is the ethics of implicit bias. I don't think that any decision-making in this world can be purely objective. Our emotions, our experiences, our implicit bias influence everything that we do and every decision that we make. Machines are programmed by humans, so naturally our biases are going to be transferred to them. There are reports of search engines delivering ads for high-paying executive jobs to men and not to women. Another example is that arrest mugshots pop up when keywords like black teenagers are entered into search engines. Microsoft's AI chatbot Tay was released on Twitter in 2016. In less than one day, the robot learned to spew racist slurs due to the information it was receiving and learning from other Twitter users. Criminal risk assessment algorithms analyze a defendant's profile and decides the likelihood that he or she will re-offend. These two individuals were arrested for petty theft. The algorithm decided that the woman was a much higher risk than the man, which proved to be wrong since she didn't have any subsequent offences. Now, programmers are not intentionally creating racist or sexist algorithms, but these machines are constantly learning and evolving from large data sets, from media outlets, from crowdsourced information. When they find biased patterns in data sets, the biases become truth, and then the biases are inherited by the program. The last topic is the ethics of errors by artificial intelligence. Who do we blame when things automated by machines go wrong? Awkward! The rise of algorithmic and high-frequency trading in the stock market leads to a stronger possibility of flash crashes, like the one on May 6, 2010. In Terminator 2, Sarah Connors goes after Dr. Miles Dyson, the inventor of the microprocessor that would lead to Skynet. She felt that he was responsible for the ultimate destruction of mankind on Judgment Day. It's all your fault! In 2001, A Space Odyssey, HAL 9000 is essentially given a death penalty and turned off because of its mistakes. I'm a... Do we blame the programmers who created the algorithms? Do we blame the owners of the robot or the algorithm? Do we blame the users of the AI tool? Or do we blame the AI itself? It seems unrealistic right now, but if a robot has a conscience and feelings, it can distinguish right from wrong. So, should it be held to the same standards as humans? If yes, should it be allowed to make mistakes every now and then, just like humans? I know I posed a lot of unanswered questions in this video, but these are important issues as AI becomes more and more prevalent in every single field. We are living in a data-driven world. Humans cannot keep up with the sheer volume of data that is generated every minute of every day. Automation is here to stay, but their effect both on humanity and industry is an important conversation. Let me know what you think about this video and about the ethics of automation in general. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.